Welcome to Stories of Traders, the ultimate destination for captivating narratives from the dynamic world of finance. Join us as we dive into the riveting experiences of individuals navigating the markets, unraveling the highs, lows, and invaluable lessons that shape their journeys. Whether you're an aspiring trader or a seasoned investor, get ready for a front row seat to the real stories behind the financial charts. Don't forget to hit that like button, share these stories with your fellow enthusiasts, and of course, subscribe to stay updated on our latest tales from the trading floor. Comment, I subscribed, to receive a personal thank you. Let the journey into the captivating world of trading begin. Michael Burry, The Big Short You might have heard about how he predicted the big 2008 money disaster, especially the crash in the U.S. housing market. His story became famous through Michael Lewis's book, The Big Short, which later became a big deal movie winning an Oscar. But there's more to Burry's success than just a good guess. To really get what makes him tick, we need to dig into his life story. It's not just about predicting things, it's about understanding how he thinks and makes decisions. So, let's take a closer look at Michael Burry, the guy who didn't just read the financial signs, but also took risks that changed the game. It's not just about money, it's about a person who went against the usual and came out on top. Join us on this journey into the life and mind of Michael Burry. Content. The Early Beginnings. Michael Burry's journey began in San Jose, California, where he was born and raised. Growing up with Rusin ancestry, his early life was marked by a significant challenge. At the tender age of two, he faced the adversity of losing his left eye to retinoblastoma, a rare form of eye cancer. Since then, he has navigated life with a prosthetic eye, a testament to his resilience from an early age. As a teenager, Burry pursued his education at Santa Teresa High School, laying the foundation for the intellectual curiosity that would shape his future. His academic pursuits took him to the University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA, where he studied economics and pre-med. The melding of these disciplines laid the groundwork for a unique perspective that would later set him apart in the world of finance. Determined to delve into the medical field, Burry earned his M.D. degree from the Vanderbilt University School of Medicine. Despite starting a residency in pathology at Stanford University Medical Center, he didn't complete it. Instead, during his off-duty hours, particularly at night, he delved into his passion, financial investing. While the medical world had its allure, it was the realm of finance that truly captured Burry's interest. Balancing his medical pursuits with a burgeoning interest in investing, he began to carve out a niche for himself in the financial landscape. Remarkably, despite not actively practicing medicine, Burry has maintained his medical license with the Medical Board of California. The Start of the Journey Just after completing medical school, Burry diverged from his path in neurology and pathology at Stanford Hospital. He ventured into the world of finance, capitalizing on his knack for value investing, a talent he had showcased as early as 1996 on stock discussion forums, notably Silicon Investor. By consistently demonstrating success with his stock picks, Burry caught the attention of major players in the financial arena including companies like Vanguard and White Mountain's Insurance Group, along with influential investors like Joel Greenblatt. His investment philosophy, deeply rooted in the principles laid out by Benjamin Graham and David Dodd in their 1934 book Security Analysis, centered on the concept of a margin of safety. In November 2000, Burry closed down his online presence and took a bold step, founding his own hedge fund, Cyan Capital. The fund, named after one of his favorite novels, Terry Brooks, The Scions of Shannara, was fueled by an inheritance and loans from his family. It didn't take long for Burry to make a mark in the financial world, achieving remarkable profits for his investors. 
in the tumultuous year of 2001, while the S&P 500 plummeted by 11.88%, Scion Capital soared with a 55% gain. The following year, as the market continued its decline by 22.1%, Burry's fund once again outperformed, yielding a 16% return. Even in 2003, when the stock market finally rebounded with a 28.69% increase, Burry's returns remained impressive at 50%. By the end of 2004, he was managing a substantial $600 million and had to turn away additional investors. The Expansion In 2005, a pivotal year in financial history, Michael shifted his focus to the subprime market. His keen analysis of mortgage lending practices in 2003 and 2004 led him to a startling conclusion. The impending collapse of the real estate bubble predicted as early as 2007. Burry, armed with his research on the values of residential real estate, particularly subprime mortgages with teaser rates, foresaw a crisis looming when the original rates would be replaced by substantially higher rates often within just two years of initiation. Taking a bold stance, Burry decided to short the market, convincing major investment firms such as Goldman Sachs to sell him credit default swaps against what he identified as vulnerable subprime deals. However, this move wasn't without its challenges. As he made payments towards the credit default swaps, an investor revolt ensued. Some of Burry's fund investors expressed skepticism about the accuracy of his predictions and demanded to withdraw their capital. Yet, as events unfolded, Burry's analysis proved astoundingly accurate. He not only safeguarded his remaining investors, but also personally profited by a staggering $100 million with an additional profit of over $700 million for those who stayed the course with him. Scion Capital, under Burry's guidance, achieved extraordinary returns of 489.34% net of fees and expenses from its inception in November 2000 to June 2008, a stark contrast to the S&P 500, which yielded just under 3%, including dividends over the same period. Remarkably, Burry was ahead of the curve. His website reveals that he liquidated his credit default swap short positions by April 2008, refusing to benefit from the bailouts of 2008 and 2009. Subsequently, he chose to liquidate his company to redirect his focus towards personal investments. In an op-ed for the New York Times on April 3, 2010, Burry pointed out a critical perspective. He argued that anyone studying the financial markets in 2003, 2004, and 2005 could have recognized the growing risk in the subprime markets. He placed blame on federal regulators for their failure to heed warnings from sources outside a closed circle of advisors. In 2013, demonstrating resilience and adaptability, Burry reopened his hedge fund under the name Scion Asset Management. This time, he filed reports as an exempt reporting advisor, ERA, active in the state of California, and approved by the SEC. His investment focus shifted towards water, gold, and farmland, emphasizing the critical importance of fresh, clean water and its intricate intersection with politics and litigation, shorting Tesla. In August 2019, Burry's views on the stock market made headlines when he commented on what he perceived as a bubble in large U.S. company stocks. He pointed to the rise of passive investing, asserting that it had orphaned smaller value-type securities globally. By 2020, Scion Asset Management's largest investments included Alphabet Inc., valued at $121 million, and Facebook, valued at $24.4 million. However, what drew significant attention was Burry's strategic move to initiate short positions on Tesla in or around early December 2020. This decision, revealed through a now-deleted tweet, hinted at Burry's concerns about Tesla's market trajectory. Subsequently, he likely added to his short positions after Tesla's market cap surpassed that of Facebook. 
Comparing the potential collapse of Tesla's stock to the housing bubble, Burry boldly proclaimed that his last big short got bigger and bigger and bigger, taunting Tesla bulls to enjoy it while it lasts. Reports in May 2021 indicated that Burry held put options on over 800,000 shares of Tesla, further solidifying his bearish stance on the electric car manufacturer. However, by October 2021, after Tesla's stock value experienced a 100% rise, Burry publicly revealed that he was no longer shorting it, showcasing his ability to adapt to changing market conditions. During the second quarter of 2021, he reportedly held put options valued at almost $31 million on the RKK ETF Innovation Index, managed by ARK Invest indicating his continued engagement in strategic financial moves, the $1.6 billion mark. In a financial twist that captured headlines in August 2023, reports surfaced indicating that Michael Burry's hedge fund, Scion Asset Management, had taken a substantial gamble on a potential U.S. stock market crash. According to widely circulated information, securities filings revealed that Burry had strategically positioned the fund with put options on both the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 by the close of Q2 2023. The reported magnitude of this move sparked intrigue, with headlines suggesting that these put options constituted a staggering 93% of Scion's entire portfolio. However, it is crucial to dissect the figures accurately. The $1.6 billion figure often associated with the put options, represents the maximum potential value these options could reach, not the actual amount for which they were purchased. This nuance is essential for a precise understanding of Scion's strategic positioning. Digging deeper into the financial landscape of Scion Asset Management, it is noteworthy that the fund's assets under management stand at $237,971,170. This figure significantly contrasts with the reported $1.6 billion bet, underscoring the importance of scrutinizing the specifics behind the headlines. Burry's calculated move to hold put options on major indices implies a bearish outlook on the overall market, reflecting a belief that these indices will experience a decline. Such strategic positions are often viewed as speculative bets against the broader market sentiment showcasing Burry's willingness to take calculated risks based on his analysis of prevailing economic conditions. The Personal Life Beyond the financial world, Michael Burry's personal life provides intriguing glimpses into the man behind the successful investor. Married with children, he resided in Saratoga, California as of 2010. A notable aspect of Burry's personal journey is his son's diagnosis with Asperger syndrome, a developmental disorder on the autism spectrum. Interestingly, Burry himself believes he may have Asperger syndrome after learning more about the condition. Reflecting on his past, he recalls the challenge of maintaining eye contact, expressing that it drained considerable energy and humorously stating, if I am looking at you, that's the one time I know I won't be listening to you. This personal insight provides a glimpse into the unique lens through which Burry navigates both professional and personal interactions. His openness about potential neurodiversity sheds light on the diverse backgrounds and perspectives that contribute to his multifaceted approach to life. Away from the financial markets, Burry finds solace and passion in heavy metal music. His musical preferences include bands like Obituary, Lamb of God, Amon Amarth, Slipknot, King Diamond, and Pantera. This personal interest adds a layer of complexity to Burry's public image, showcasing a more personal and relatable side beyond the high-stakes world of finance. Moreover, Burry has been vocal about his criticism of the lockdown measures implemented during the COVID-19 pandemic in the United States. This perspective aligns with his reputation for being outspoken on various issues, demonstrating that his influence extends beyond the realm of finance into social and public health discussions. 
Bottom Line In the world of finance, Michael Burry's story is more than just numbers on a screen. It's a journey of resilience, foresight, and personal triumph. From predicting the 2008 financial crisis to navigating the complexities of the stock market, Burry's life offers valuable lessons. Beyond the boardrooms and stock charts, Burry is a family man, a music enthusiast, and a voice on matters that impact us all. His journey, marked by challenges and victories, serves as a reminder that success is not just about profits, but about the people, passions, and principles that shape our lives. Thank you for tuning in to another compelling episode of Stories of Traders. We hope you found inspiration and valuable insights from the fascinating tales shared today. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it with your trading community, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button to stay connected with our future stories. Comment I subscribed to receive a personal thank you. Remember, the financial world is full of twists and turns and we'll be here bringing you the real, unfiltered stories that matter. Until next time, happy trading and may your portfolios thrive. This is Stories of Traders signing off.